Hey, welcome back to Evil's Comics. I'm Evil Mike, and I got a review for you from DC Comics. We are talking about the Death of Superman um, 30th Anniversary Special Number One. This is the Raphael Sermento cover, and the reason I picked it up is because it's the first appearance of Doombreaker, and he's in the book. Um, I was kind of surprised because this book is actually um, not what I thought it was. I thought it was just going to be like a a summed up version of the death of Superman. It is not. It is four brand new stories that kind of weave in between or during or um, <clears throat> but let's get there. I'll put timestamps below if you want to skip to a certain one. It is four short stories with several different pinups from different uh, artists. <clears throat> The first, one, the first one is The Life of Superman, written by Dan Jurgens with pencils as well. Brett uh, Breeding is uh, inks, Brad Anderson is colors, John Workman is letters. The second story is Above and Beyond. Jerry Ordway is on the uh, story. Tom Grummet is pencils. Doug Hazelwood is on inks. Glenn Whitmore is on colors. Rob Lee is on letters. Standing Guard is Robert Stern um, writer Butch Geisy is art Glenn Whitmore colors and Rob Lay is letters and then last but not least time is Lewis Simonson is writer John Boganova is the artist Glenn Whitmore is colors Rob Lay is uh, letters um, after reading this all the stories are really good and like I said they kind of weave in and out of the death of Superman um, you know event that happens so if you have not read that event I highly recommend reading that event um, I read it back when it came out and so I'm kind of foggy on some things but um, each story was fantastic the art was really good but I, I can say one thing as the stories progress they, they get better and in, in, in different ways um, <clears throat> but the the first story um, the life of Superman is where we actually meet the first appearance of Doombreaker and it is this guy I think is uh, his name is like Layden Craig or Layden Craig uh, bad with names but it's just some random guy that was actually at the the you know in front of the Daily Planet where Doomsday and Superman both died and he was part of the cleanup crew and he actually took a piece of doomsday home with him it actually like infects him and slowly over the years changes him into what they deem doombreaker um but we're basically starting out in this guy's apartment they're kind of filling you in with like news articles like hey the cleanup crew from the doomsday fight but we see that this guy is not feeling so well he's changing into what looks like doomsday um <clears throat> and then it's like it cuts over to Superman's son John when he is a kid and he's in school and they're doing the 30th anniversary at school for that event like it really you know like it really happened and there's a guy that I don't remember his name haha <laughs> I'm bad with names but um he basically comes in and talks to the class about that event and stuff you know and he it, which is kind of neat because he has the armband that they actually gave in the comic um, but basically that's when John finds out that Superman one time died he did not know that that happened he didn't know that his dad had fought um, Doomsday so it's kind of like um, an eye-opening thing um, we cut over to <clears throat> Superman and we have found out that the Lighten Craig uh, or Lloyd and Craig something like that um, has changed into Doombreaker and he is already wreaking havoc through the city um, I'm trying to remember his name Jimmy Olsen he runs up to Superman with like photo proof he shows him on his phone and basically he's like hey that the, you know we got we got some proof that this thing looks like doomsday here check this out and they do show like the picture screen and it's just like a building falling and there's kind of what looks like the shadow of doomsday um so of course superman goes and checks it out we cut back over to john and he is questioning his mom lois lane about the whole doomsday event and she kind of like okay like 
you know, we wanted to wait until you were a little older before we told you the story. But yes, you know, your dad fought Doomsday. He ended up killing Doomsday, but at the same time, like, you know, your dad did end up dying. Um, they kind of, they kind of, you know, she kind of tells the story as it happened, like how he came out of the ground, how most of the Justice League and other heroes around the world tried to help Superman, um, and basically they, at the time when she's telling this, that's when they kind of jump over to Superman and him investigating on Doombreaker. Um, and basically, Doombreaker just jumps out of nowhere, grabs Superman, and starts beating the hell out of him. Um, it start like, at this point, it start picking up around town that Superman is fighting like a doomsday-looking villain. Um, but they go back and forth with the, and they show a lot of homage, like the covers from the original um, Death of Superman series. But basically like it's it's John just finding out the whole truth about like what went down with Doomsday how he was resurrected like it, it was and the book kind of mentions that it was a one-time thing Superman kind of verifies that because as they are fighting and telling the story Doom Doombreaker which he is later Dean will get there but um and Superman eventually that their fight kind of happens exactly where you know, in front of the Daily Planet, and John and Lois, and then uh, some other people are there, like Jimmy and the ex editor in chief um, from the Daily Planet. He's there, but a lot of it's just deja vu. People are like, "Oh my God, we've seen this, and it didn't end so well last time." You know, yada yada yada. Um, but that's kind of where we get to meet finally Doombreaker, because up until this point, he's been up in the shadows and stuff. Um, but as you can see, he has the four arms. He is a little more evolved than regular um, Doomsday. Um, as the fight's going down, Superman does not want to fight him. He keeps trying to talk to Doombreaker, like, hey, man, uh, you know, but instantly, like, it's the mix of Doomsday taking over the human counterpart. But he, he, he's just focused on the Kryptonian. He's like, the Kryptonian must die. He's like, leave me alone. Stop it. You know, and and there's a bunch of moments when Superman is is I'd say like two or three moments when he's actually trying to talk to this guy, and he's trying to you know relay that he doesn't want to he doesn't want to fight. But at this time, that's when kind of Doombreaker just jumps into full mode. At this point, I mean, it looks like the original fight, except like an upgraded one. Um, Superman is just getting the crud beat out of him. There's no other heroes that, that jump in. It's just Superman by himself. Um, at this moment, when Doom Breaker finally kind of unleashes on Superman, that's where John actually names uh, Doom Breaker. They go through a whole bunch of different names, but um, it's kind of a callback to Lois Lane actually naming uh, Doomsday back in the day. Um, but. W Superman tries to get the upper hand and he actually uses heat ray and his laser beam eyes on Doombreaker and we find out quickly that Doombreaker has evolved past that and he actually has the same you know heat ray vision or whatever all this time that's going down like like Superman's trying to get the upper fi the upper hand and it's not really working so at this time that's when the, the story spends a little time trying to figure out you know who this guy is that's when Lois Lane overhears some construction workers that heard Doombreaker's voice um, which leads her back to the the construction workers apartment she actually talks to this tenant saying that you know he was a really nice guy but over the years he's just been changing and it sounds like he's in pain um, and basically at that time Lois Lane knows that this you know this guy and um, let me see if I can find a name Light and Crate, or yeah, I'm so bad with names. Um, yeah, I don't remember. Um, but, anyways, that's when Lois Lane basically kind of yells out to Superman. Superman always listening to Lois Lane, and, and Superman finds out this guy is a human. And um, 
but Superman also realizes at this time because it's like Doomsday mixed with the human that that's why this version of Doomsday is evolving at a more like rapid rate when Doomsday when he fought Doomsday before he had the whole thing where he couldn't be killed the same way twice and now it's like every time Superman uses a power that this guy evolves to it because sure enough Superman tries to take off flying and this guy grows wings um, so not only is he four-armed, laser-beamed, and he's got the wings. At this point, Su Superman's just getting his butt beat and thrown around. Most of the crowd is going back to like the deja vu thing with John, John, and a couple, a couple others being like, "Nah, Superman's gonna win." And most of the, the crowd being like, "Well, what if he doesn't?" You know. Um, but. Uh, with some more butt kickery, I mean, it's a badass fight that goes down with Superman. Superman, the whole time, he's trying to prevent, you know, people from being hurt, damage being done, and he's trying to, you know, stop this guy from wreaking more havoc, trying to keep him focused on him. Eventually, John kind of jumps in, and, you know, he, he's like, no, we can talk to him, he's a human, and, and, um, basically, it's the whole, like, Kryptonian thing, and, like Doombreaker starts to attack John because he senses that John is a Kryptonian. This is when Superman really just, I mean, jumps in the toe. He's like, nah, he ain't messing with my son. And at this point, this is when Superman does all the damage because Lois, um, she brings back the, it was Doomsday Claw from the first fight, but she brings it and he basically starts using it as a weapon, finding out that it actually, it does hurt, um, Doombreaker, but eventually what it does is they, he he ends up trying to destroy the artifact and when it does he ends up seeing that Doombreaker ends up getting hurt when he's trying to destroy the, like the artifact or so eventually Superman just uses it as a like catalyst and he doesn't understand why this works he, he kind of expresses that but it does revert this guy back to a human it doesn't kill him it doesn't <clears throat> it's a dope ass like um, but he does revert back to a human Superman saved the day everybody's like yeah that's why Superman's the greatest and then hence the life of uh, Superman um, we do get like a badass spread um, the next story above and beyond and I'm kinda gonna skim through these but the above and beyond is basically about um, Superman's parents and John and Martha Ken and what they were going through during the whole like original doomsday attack seeing it on TV Martha freaking the F out you know John's like eh, it's just the media they're trying to hype it up you know and he pulls out the scrapbook saying like look at all these times Superman prevailed and they, they kinda like go through some of the most classic moments from Superman's journey with Metallo, Mongol, um, War World, stuff like that. Uh, like his introduction to the Justice League, like the first time, well the first time he led the Justice League. But then Martha's like, yeah, when she pulls out kind of like a different scrapbook, this one not being like, like really a scrapbook, it's like an envelope full of um, old newspaper clippings. But basically, she pulls out this thing and she's like, yeah, but those are, those are all the times at the news, you know, we had pictures and stuff like that. She's like, what about all these other people that Superman, you know, saved or, you know, helped that you never heard of? And she starts going into detail about, like, you know, a time that Superman saved a bus and it, it, it had, like a, like, a whole slew of injured people on it, like, I think 25 injured kids and a bus driver or something like that. And and traffic was all blocked they would have been you know possibly dead or, or <clears throat> but Superman was able to get him to the hospital and and uh, at the same moment that's when Superman is greeted by this nurse the nurse is like hey we have a transplant that's that's on the other side of the country but we're in this this blizzard and and none of the the helicopters can take off so Superman sure enough you know he does the transplant and you know she has like articles about like you know the other people that the transplant ended up saving like the four or three lives that that uh 
you know, Superman did end up saving, and then, like, kind of at the very end, because they, they, you know, touch on them, you know, the, the news and, and what's to come from the news, because he does end up dying, but it's just more about the, the, like, how Superman was willing to, like, lay down his life for, for Earth, that's how, you know, <clears throat> like how his humanity and, and how humane he was. He was like the best of us. Um, after each story there is dope spreads and, and in my opinion they kind of get better as it goes. Um, the third story, Standing Guard, is all about the Guardian and it's it's kind of like um, because Guardian and Dublex do show up um, at the very end when Superman was dead in front of the Daily Planet and um it's kind of the it's just guardian kind of telling the whole story about what he was doing up until that point and and how he was trying to help out superman honestly this story right here was one of the uh, this one and the last one in my opinion were the two better stories and it wasn't necessarily like uh, it, it was just that they hit like sentimental pieces and like the homage parts but it's basically like what the guardian was doing all the way up until he found superman dead um it goes further into that because it's like well you know and it, it's really about like um how the guardian and where he works for at um i'm drawing a blank i know this name um at the laboratory where uh what is it called big DC fan I don't even know Camdus um, the Cadmus project that's where like Superboy and but basically um, the Guardian uh, it goes after that and where they take Superman's body and Doomsday body um, and basically it is a fight like that kind of happens with the American government and then the Cavernous Project. The Cavernous Project wants the, you know, Doomsday Body and Superman's Body and it's basically like, you know, the few people that that knew where Superman was and this is the few right here. It's like the Guardian, it's like the, it's like a, I think he's a sergeant or a police officer and then it's um, Maggie Sawyer. Um, I'm not sure if she was the question at the time. I'm, I'm not sure. But basically, it was those few standing, like, you know, against Capnus uh, from getting their bodies. Um, some more spreads, uh, some Bill Sinkovich right there, and dope. Um, and the last story, Time, being a story all about Steel and what he was doing up until the point um, when Superman died, which we all know he shows up during the Reign of Superman series, but, you know, this is kind of the story about, you know, what he was doing up until the point, and if you know Steel, Steel, like, his, his origin story is, like, Superman ended up saving him when he was on the job site, so Steel just basically has this debt and kind of that he has to pay back Superman, and it's basically him trying to make it to where Superman is, and like block after block after block of course from the devastation of that fight it's just he's running into roadblocks and they're just showing how badass a dude this is this, that steel is you know um and all this without the suit him lifting cars and, and saving people from burning buildings at one point even you know like um like stop like you know i don't know how to say like catching a falling building out of the sky and, and like before people could get smushed kind of thing um and they finally get to that moment where he does make it to where superman is and of course superman's already passed with doomsday there and there's that moment when guardian and duplex are checking um superman's heartbeat and it's basically like um right after that it's it's you know what Steel was basically like, you know, greeted by another person that still needed help. Now that most of the world superheroes were kind of taken out of the equation, Superman being dead at the moment, 
Um, and Steele was like, you know what? Uh, I mean, and this guy, I mean, he's not fine. That's why he's he's down here. He's broken, beaten, slashed, bloody. And, and basically, this guy runs up. There's still more people that needs help. You know, there's no superheroes. Can you help? We saw what you did, you know. And sure enough, Steele goes on to help them. And it basically says that, like, and, and I've seen this recently, that they're about to come out with a Steel series. But it's like, hey, you know, continue on for more um of steel which i definitely will um but these are some of the better um pinups gabriel rodriguez right here and um but this one right here i think is my favorite um with all the different homage homages with the reign of superman the the casket lois um and that one is jamal campbell um and this one over here is Carm carmine D. Gatamino, which is a dope one too. Um, but that is all the stories. I'm kind of, I do apologize. I sped through some of them, but this this video would be very lengthy if I kind of gave a detailed review on the other ones. But honestly, you don't want to be spoiled on the last two because they were dope, dope reads. I didn't show all the pinups on purpose. Um, but the death of anniversary, the death of Superman, the anniversary special was definitely a great buy. It's, it's, it's pricey at ten bucks, but um, for those of you that enjoy the original event, that maybe looking for a little more, hey, there you go. And you got a first appearance of a new character that could become something more. Who knows? I don't know. Um, but hey, that's the review. Like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys later. Bye.